Hilltop Glove Good afternoon, good morning, welcome to the Hilltop Glove Podcast. Today we are excited to have Ronaldo Wilson, also known as DJ Puff, as our guest. DJ Puff's love of music started in high school where he was influenced by various DJs such as DJ Jazzy Jeff, DJ Tiesto, and many others. Since then, he has become an experienced disc jockey and has performed at major nightclubs, private parties, and even for political officials. DJ Puff is not only limited to the Southern music scene, but he, he also has taken an industry learning experience overseas to enhance his knowledge on the disco and dance club experience. He has worked with major artists such as Nicki Minaj, Gucci Man, and Eric Benet, to name a few. Aside from his passion for music, DJ Puff is also an advocate for fitness and health. He has worked as an educator at Lululemon and is a member of Cool Camp, a group that caters to all ranges of entertainment, whether it's nightlife or community slash cool events. Recently, DJ Puff was featured in a reality show called Queen's Court, produced by Will Packer, where he was a suitor finding celebrity love starring Evelyn Lozada, Tamar Braxton, and Nivea. Although he did not find love on the show, he is still out here on the market. For all the ladies out there. <laughs> we, are, we are thrilled to have DJ Puff on our podcast and can't wait to learn more about his experiences and insights in the music industry. Thank you for joining us today. How are you doing, my brother? Thank you for having me, man. I'm great, man. I'm great, great, great. Man, we're so happy to have you. Go was ahead. Was it Lululemon? Lululemon. Yeah, Lululemon. Oh, okay. I said it all weird. Oh, okay. I was, I was Don't like, worry about I me. Thought... That's a new company. Right. Yeah, be quiet. It's Lululemon. <laughs> my fault, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at it. And I was like, I know what I'm supposed to say, but this it is what I'm saying. It didn't come off right. It didn't come off that It's way. been a long day. Don't, don't feel bad. I, I've heard people say Lululemon before. See? But see? <laughs> see? Because I don't wear it either, so I'm not, you know. It's expensive. My lady, she likes, what's that stuff? She likes Fabletics and them other people, so I don't get to see the other one. So it is what it is. Is, but um, we still like it. It's good stuff. So um, the one thing we always like to start off with asking folks, and this is to bring everything down to um, base level. Um, can we get a little background, story of your life? Can you tell us a little bit more about your childhood experience and what it was like growing up? Man, like, honestly speaking, I probably had one of the, you know, easiest, like, non-storytelling childhood ever man it's just it's like, like that. that's a good thing it's just hey i grew up um grew up with my mom and my dad you know um my dad they got divorced so i was you know between households when my father moved to uh he moved to arkansas okay so i was back and forth from here in arkansas you know during the summers and all of that stuff so i mean but for the most part man you know growing up as a child you know I, it was it was great you know coming up as an athlete and then uh um, what sport? Football, basketball, and baseball. And see Oh, you funny, play baseball? Oh, funny wow. story. Baseball was my natural, natural born sport. I be telling black people, play listen, baseball. Play baseball. Listen, my dad, <laughs> he he kicks me in my butt to this day. Yeah. Because I probably, I probably could have gone pro right out of high it. school. I believe it. You know, I believe I was, it. We don't I was play that, baseball though. I you was stopped. that good. Wow. Yeah. I was that good. That's a fact that no one knows yeah, about Yeah, nobody, yeah, no, nobody know really that. knows that, but I was that good. And then, right after that, I worked out. This was years. I hadn't touched baseball in years. I went to go work out with the uh, minor league team here. It was the um, the blow. It was the blowfish back then. Before, yeah, that's a before old, the yeah, yeah. Before the uh, fireflies. So the manager told me, you know, after the whole workout, he was like, man, you're about, he, you're about a season away from where you need to be. When I heard, I was like, I hadn't touched a baseball in over 15, 20 years. Good wow. gracious. Like, yeah. So, we don't play. and when he told oh. me that, I was like, wow. But being young, younger back then, I yeah. it didn't register. And I was, you know, DJing and doing all kind of other things. So my, my focus wasn't there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I passed up an opportunity. <laughs> and it's just like, right. I look back now, I'm like, so stupid. I could have been playing right. with you on MLB. Like, I get it because I like my baseball because we grew up. About. Yeah, we grew up baseball. Yeah. Guys. That's what the era we grew up in. Ken yeah. Griffey Jr., all these guys. That's what our thing was. I mean, I thought that I was going to go play baseball. I want to play baseball. Um, But then I wanted to be a preacher after I learned how to preach. I'm not going to lie. It's some weird term. Weird term. Weird term. But um, I was, it was always um interesting to me that a lot of black athletes, we want to go into uh, football or basketball. I'm like, there's limited positions. The money is actually not as long as it is in baseball, and we just like went away from it, and so they had to go get black baseball athletes from out of the country. Mm -hmm. So I always thought that was strange. And I was just geared to say, like, predominantly, you know, baseball now is you know Caucasian, yep. you know, your your Latin, yep. 
your uh, Hispanics. Yeah. Like all, all, all of that. Of all of that. All and, of and, that. And it doesn't, and with the Latin, it doesn't matter if they're um, black or not. Right. They all play baseball they and all... they bring us over and they're like, well, we got black people playing baseball. I'm like, yeah, but they're speaking Spanish. Yeah, they're black he, people. Right. They like baseball. And I'm like, dang, good point. I mean, you got to think about who the M- MVP for the NL was this year. You got to think, like, it's, it's that's what it yeah. is. We supposed to be playing baseball, y'all. y'all and then the skill level, here. like, it's not like you just got to be this, this outstanding, no. you know, athlete. I mean, you no. have to be good. But, you know, in basketball, you got to be able to... You have to glide from the free throw <laughs> right. line. You have like, to be able to shoot you, from 35 feet out, pinpoint range, while somebody right. six eight has their right. hands up there. You're not shooting like Steph. Yeah. You're not moving around on the court like yeah. LeBron. You're, you know, you ain't you're playing. Okay you're player. playing overseas. Right. Right. With that being said, that your window might not be closed. Baseball's different. You can play later. And I don't, you can play, you can play Is later. anybody in the in the league? Yes, over, over 40? forty. Yes, pitchers too. P- yeah, you can play because look, and that's thing, my position. I was pitching third base. Yeah. My fault, but you yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, Crazy. like you said, it's skill set. Right. So, like, you have to have hand eye hand eye coordination. You yeah. have to know how the how to play certain um situations mm-hmm. when the ball comes to you. That's what people don't realize. It's, it's not IQ. Yeah, it's, it's, a, IQ. it's a high IQ. So, sport. if your mind works, you can play the game right. long into your career. Like Randy Johnson played late into his years. I mean, he wasn't pitching the same way he was right. at first, but he's pitching late into his forty. Like you could get away with it. Man, you messed me up with that. Listen, don't gas me up. Listen, you messed me up with that, man. Once I get confirmation, and affirmation by myself, <laughs> this is... We're gonna have you on my lead team is. after that. Today bro. is the affirmation you're right. thing. Yeah, man. But you're um, right. continue. My fault. We stopped because you hit me with baseball. Oh no, so. you you're good, man. But uh, you know, after a while, you know, had a sister. Okay. Um, you know, my parents remarried, so my dad had a sister from on his side. Okay. And, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with her, Asia Wilson. So um, <laughs> I like how you said it like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm familiar with her yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, that that whole situation there was crazy because you know I used to change her, change her diapers, you know, <laughs> holding her, stopping her from crying because that was the one crying soul there. <laughs> but um, but I never, never thought that we would be in this position. You know that that she's in right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, on the level that she's on. Would she train with you? Y'all well, train, we train we at times when I could make it to the gym and, and train on the weekends with my dad, like he had her in the gym, like she did not like it. He's yeah. put this weight vest on her. Oh wow! And like she did not like it. Yeah, she she was a volley. We thought you know volleyball. she was going to be volleyball. I she would ran see track that. For I saw a minute. that track makes and, sense. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I never saw this you know this basketball phenomenon. You know, come and now she's like, like reach levels that haven't even been thought about yet. You know, now, I remember especially watching at her age. Yo, yeah. you know, seriously, that's yeah. the thing. Like, I, I remember watching her and hearing about her in high school, and then watching her in the uh, collegiate level, and I was just like, you know, she's better than Kansas. Because in my, because I've watched basketball hard. Like, ask, ask my wife. Like, what was, what was I doing this week? I was watching women's basketball. And watching all the men's basketball, all the basketball games. Because, like, Kevin, this is what we used to do. We used to ride around. And, and you know, right. we have all the tournaments and stuff that come during the holidays. Right. So we would go and watch all the tournaments and watch all the high school basketball players and see who's coming up and et cetera so we could be aware of it because we like sports. Like, we really are those people. We like sports. And so uh, watching folk come up, I was just like, man, I want to see this thing make it to the league. I want to see how how people are able to, to play against it. I was like, man, ain't nobody going to stop this young lady. I didn't see anybody all. in the way. I could not see anybody that can compete. And this is like, you have some great players in the WNBA, even people that come from overseas to play. Right. And I'm talking about like amazing people. Like some of these people are huge too in comparison mm-hmm. to her because you think she's big. Yeah. No, there's way more dominant, strong players. No, her her skill set. That's what I was going to say. Her skill y'all? set. And, and it's like she. Compared to yours. So what now? What's the height level? Like? I'm 6'4, six, she's 6'6. Six, six. Yep. Jeez. So yeah, yeah she yeah. she makes it like when yeah. we when we're together, she makes me look like a, a you're her little brother. <laughs> yeah, like the real like I'm the little brother, <laughs> and like I'm the shortest. Like my dad's six eight. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, Dang. But that's why baseball. He'd have been four. amazing in baseball. Yeah, yeah. that would have been scary. <laughs> I'm gonna keep bothering you. About <laughs> you gonna keep bringing it up. <laughs> that's fine, man. I could have had I could have me a homegrown. South Carolina baseball player that I'm wearing jersey and rooting for right now. <laughs> First 40 year old introduced me to <laughs> the MLB. It's possible. Nah, I'm but no, my that... age and everything. Yeah, you are. You are. We didn't ask. 
all good. It's all right, but um, no, I, I appreciate you candidness on this because a lot of times when folks have siblings and et cetera like that, they don't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. But it's a it's a good story. Yeah, you yeah. should let people know about it because um, for a lot of folks that listen to our podcast, um, specifically locally and whatnot, it's good to know, and I like them to hear. You're in a happening place. It's not like a, it's not a dead place. It's not a it's dead not. zone at all. Yeah. Um, despite what you may hear, you don't need to run to um, Atlanta or Charlotte for everything. No. And that's one of the things I know a lot of folks do here. I'm like, no, we have a good saturation, place. man. It's Say saturated. It. Like, Say it. We, that's why, and that's one of the reasons why I'm glad that she stayed home because she, she could have gone to UConn. Yeah. She could have gone to Say UConn's, it. the Tennessee. Yep. The wherever, yep. and you know they rolled out the red carpet. I mean, when they say, when I say star-studded treatment, no, they did. Yeah, and you know she, it, it was a story behind. I mean, I can't. I'm not gonna sit here and tell the whole story, but you know, it was times that where you know her grandmother couldn't even you know walk across the USC campus. She had to walk around the campus wow. to get to where she was going, and now she has a statue. On, oh. the campus. Oh. on the campus. Like, who Fine. does that? Like, she the stayed point. home, created her whole, her own vibe, that, yeah. her own story, mm-hmm. everything. It's a full circle moment. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. she created everything that's going on now, she curated that herself. Just mm-hmm. by, you know, being the person that she is. Man, I'm trying and, to... Yeah. Morals, morals. Like, who... who <laughs> it's only... I don't... You can't go to any college campus and find statues of, for one, a female mm-hmm. African-American no. mm-hmm. athlete. No, that doesn't right. really You're exist. Right. George I, Rogers is the only say athlete it again. with <laughs> a statue. statue, and he's, okay, he's African-American, but yeah. Yeah, he had one of Heisman. Yeah. Back in old school days, playing, like, yeah. dude, that's that's rare. Like, that's history. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. care how years, years down the line, yeah. she can say, I did that. I did that. I did that. Like you go look at that. <laughs> right. like, oh, that's a black woman. Yeah, that yeah. is. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a black woman on there. Man, so, so I, I gotta ask. Okay, right, so you're having this experience. You 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 have a, a younger sister who's also in the limelight. Both of y'all in the limelight. Um, did you did you attend college? Yeah, I attended uh, Benedict College. He's I graduated from Benedict. Benedict. I went to Clemson for okay for a good short spurt. You know, I went to go play football, but then. Came what position back, did you play? Wide receiver. Did you enjoy it? I did. It, it was some, you know, some NCAA issues going on, so I couldn't do what I wanted to do. <laughs> but, Understood. you know, it, it was an experience in itself. Yeah. And then, you know, came back home. I guess it was like, yeah, you need to come back. You know, Bring it, yourself back. Bring, come <laughs> on get back. Get out of trouble. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I played um, I played three seasons uh, at, uh, at Benedict. Oh, did you like the experience yeah. at Benedict? Loved it. You like what they're doing now? It's nothing like, oh man, undefeated. Amazing. Come on. I, mean, I'm a, I, I don't hate want they lost, leave. you know, in the in yeah. the uh, playoffs. In the playoffs, yeah. but you know, First round again, you know, but... we we didn't do that. Like that no. was unheard Come of. Right. Come on. Right. I hope he stays. The coach, I hope the coach stays. I hope he don't go. Please don't take. Oh no, nah, he he's not going anywhere. I'm pretty sure he got another bo- another bonus. They better give him that bonus <laughs> because when you again when you get sub homegrown like that again, this is another issue with South Carolina, like. Normally things don't stay here. And I'm like, man, you're like, stay here. Don't leave. Like, grow it here. Right. Like, give us something to be proud of. Man. And this is an HBCU, not a PWI. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So hopefully, you know, that'll help with recruitment. Yeah, you know, it's definitely going to help. Enrollment, yep. all kind of things. It so, puts know. money back into it the does. school to allow for scholarships and stuff for Absolutely. stuff outside of athletics. Right. Mm-hmm. So people just come and go to school there. Yeah. Um, Donors, your, all kind it. of stuff, you know. Yeah. Now, another thing I ask you, um, just with, because I know this, especially with DJing, et cetera. When did you start DJing? Ooh. So I started DJing back in 2002. I graduated from high school. And uh, I didn't know. I I was supposed to go overseas to play basketball. Okay. But uh, some things happened and I couldn't leave the States. So I was like, well, I got to go to school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, being that my family, my whole Pretty much my family upbringing, you know, came through Benedict. My grandfather, <clears throat> my oh, grandfather so was a was a was a chaplain at Benedict. My grandmother taught at Benedict. Oh, wow. So it was like, and then my dad, he, you know, he coached there for a while. So Dang. it was like you got to go to Benedict. Right. This is <laughs> yeah. Where you got to go to Benedict. <laughs> like, I, I had to go. So yeah. it was yeah. It was no other uh, no other way. So uh, yeah, I got accepted to other schools, but it was like, nah, bro. 
See, like, don't thank you. you. Dare. Thank yeah. you. Dare. Thank yeah. you. Because why? Like I tell people, like they they built that lineage. Like you're gonna get basically what you get at all schools. It is. It's, it's yeah. not. It's, not it's, much it's a diff- different atmosphere. That's like it. my smallest class at Clemson had ninety something students in it. Mm-hmm. Like you just a number. That's right. It. You ain't getting paid. You got an email. You got to do an email to talk to the professor. You're not yeah. even talking to the professor. You're talking to the to the TA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. So there it's like, what's the point? Right. No point. It, it's you know you you really got to be in that mindset mm-hmm. to handle that type of education. Yeah. So uh you know I get to go to my my person's right. office right there. Yeah. I get to go Speak knock on the door. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm I saying? need help. Just right. Right there. Long conversations with them. So, and your classes are more intimate. There you go. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right, 15, 20 students, you Come know, on. sometime 30, I'll be maybe about, 40, but see? it's still, but it's you still know. so right. small in comparison. I tell black students all the time, yeah, these nice schools are big, get a PWIs, but if you get accepted to a HBCU, don't look at it as a funny as as a step down. It's never, right. it's the same because mm-hmm. what they don't realize is credentials are the same overall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Overall, the board, they're all the same. So as long as it has its credentials and things are there, you're going to get the same exact education. It's about the amount of work that you put in. Right, and it's about how it's presented. Yes. Like, you, yes. Can, you can you can tell me some stuff about some stuff that's going on right now that somebody else has to go do research on. They there, don't know about go. it. There you go. Yeah. Yep. They don't know about it. They don't know it firsthand. So, you know, it, it works both ways. Yep. It works both ways. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I, you know, stayed at Benedict and, you know, got my degree. Yay! Nice. Thank you. Y'all like that you said it because our our audience needs to hear that, especially because we have like some millennials listen to us, um, younger folk. I know I have uh, high school students and et cetera that listen to us. I have my um, folk that work with their, their children, so they listen to our podcast. I make sure they listen, Aww, to it, so yeah. they can hear it, right. So when they hear it from us, okay, I can do that. All right, that makes sense. Um, and it makes them feel confident in their decisions as well. Yeah. That's one Ooh. big thing about our podcast. I met my first girlfriend coming out of high school, uh, going to Benedict. I used to see her going. I used to go to the basketball games and stuff. She was a cheerleader. Oh. So I used to go to the games and I was like, <laughs> that one right there. That, that one. That I'm going to get that right there. <laughs> and sure enough, I got the Benedict, worked that magic. And I was a, mind you, I'm a freshman. Freshman, yeah. Whoa, did you spring on some of this stuff I'm a, that? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, yeah, that's, 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 that's what he talked about. He had that. He had that lust in his eyes. He smelled it. He's, and the peaches look good. I'm a freshman, <laughs> and she was incoming that year. I think it was 2002. I want to say she was. She's either a junior or a senior. Oh, but I know dang. she was. She was about I to, tried she that. Was about to look, head out. I tried that. I had tried it that too. I was found this girl in classes. I was carrying her books. <laughs> oh, bro, I was trying to get in there, bro. I know where you were at, my G. Bro, I ain't got a lot to do. I ain't doing that. Y'all are funny. Y'all are funny. Hey, I did it. And you we, did it. You know, we were together my whole my whole college career. And even when I went to Clemson. Oh, cool. Know, I would, that was dope. That was yeah, dope. Yeah, we, we would find ways to, you know, see each other, make it happen. See? And yeah. Yeah, so we were together see. for a good four, four years. Yeah. That's pretty for college. That's a long time. Yeah. And me being young now, I'm yeah, like, that's freshman. A, that's right. what I'm about to say. It's, it's stuff it's running all over the place. Right. And, and, I was a, and I was an athlete. Right. That's what I was saying. He wasn't even worried about it. Like, then I got you went what to I wanted. Clemson. Like, you, you went to a whole other school. Yeah. So. Yeah. But like you said, you, have, you found what you wanted. Yeah. And, and, and suck at me into being. See, this is another thing that people don't know either. You know, I was on the Chilean squad. Oh, really? Yeah. As a lifter. I was a. I be telling listen. men to go do that, and you can get scholarships. Listen, we got clients. It was it, a buddy clowny, of mine, but, uh, mm. Justin, Isaiah. It was a few of us. You know, I went to them. I was like, matter of fact, we were walking. We were going to the gym, and you know, watching the cheerleaders and stuff. You know, we, yeah. you know, this is before we got into the football thing, and the Chilean coach shot them his meals at uh, Benedict College. Shout out. Um, she was like, you know. We, hey guys, you know, y'all wanna join a Chilean squad? We like, what? Nah. So we looking at the girls, you know, they doing stunts and stuff. And I see, of course, the girl who I was talking uh-huh. about. So uh, we was like, man, well, let's just try it. You know, let's try it. So we went through the practice, whatever. And we was like, you know what? She, when she said you get a scholarship. Told you. I said, oh, told you. I'm there. Yeah, we yeah, in. We in, in. We Sign me up. Sign me up. Right, right there, what we got to do? Lift, now, lift, I said, bro. I will not be doing this. No pom-poms. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Pom-pom splits, no. So, 
Yeah, we ended up being lifters. We were like the first male lifters to come through uh, through Benedict. And, and now we was... got we got clowned for it. But once they saw what after that was first looking. game and what we were doing, hey man, y'all got some more spot. Nah, nah. Mm. It's too late. I, cut it. I try you to tell qualify. men that all the time, man. <laughs> yeah. Like you think I, I had some gentlemen when it was, this was when I was uh, counseling at the College of Charleston, and they're like, "Yo, I need some more money for books, etc." I said, "Hey, did, have you um just as a heads up, like?" Would you be interested in cheerleading? Like, he said, no. I said, no. Like, go into, like, lift them up so they can do stuff. Yeah. Get your little megaphone, yell at the crowd. Yeah. And they said, what? I said, have you ever not paid attention? I said, you're going to get a scholarship. It's hard to get men to do that. But they need the men for it. Because it there's no woman strong enough and capable enough of throwing up. Yeah. I mean, they are, but, you not know, they, you manner. need it. Sometimes yeah. you need a man. You need a male You see present. how big these guys be. Man, listen. That's my point. I'm and, like, and this the, ain't no pushover dudes. Going like, to chilling competition. Say it. Oh, my God. It's professional. <laughs> you <don't> imagine. <laughs> yes. You got five, six hundred, a <laughs> thousand women. Yes. Running around with skirts on Say and it. shouting and screaming and, and jumping and kicking and flipping. I'm all like, up through I'm the air. heaven. All up through like, the air. what? No competition either, we, Cause ain't no competition because right. it's just you and probably like 20, 30 other guys. Listen, we stand we in the same hotels party. and we like, it's oh, like, my God. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Call me. Nah, I remember I put this person out. He said, you know what? I went to go ask and they said they'll take me and they'll give me 15. I said, I tried to get you $1,500 every semester. It's three grand a year. Mm -hmm. That pays for your books, don't it? And he got some money left over. Mm -hmm. He was like, that was, thank you. Oh, I appreciate that. He thought wow. I was joking. And not to mention, if you have other scholarships, that's money in your it. pocket. Yeah, it's, you don't even have to worry about it. It's free money. You don't mm -hmm. have to pay that back. <laughs> so just so y'all know who's listening, if y'all have yeah. some children going to college, yeah. and they, they need better short, play a sport. Hey, tell them. Let's go ask the chili. Hey, would you, can I can I help out with the dance squad or such such? Something. Yeah, man, it's yeah, necessary. Absolutely. Um, I gotta ask this. What, what was your first set of turntables? Who my first set of turntables? Um, I started out. <clears throat> I was diving back and forth between. Um, it was this box. It was like a new mark. I think it was called a new mark. And it was like, it had a small little wheel on it. It had all the buttons, you know, the forward, back, play, like stop. Like how Hercules was. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. It was something real small. And these CDs. So, you know, yes. you know CD pop out. pop out. So that was when I initially started. But then, you know, I started with turntables after that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, with vinyls. I didn't really, you know, dive into it like I wanted to because the around this time, you know, technology was kicking in. Oh, you were getting your yeah. overdrive. Yeah. Right. Yo, this it was, was coming. That you had, you had before you had Serato, you had um, Stanton with their final scratch. Right. It was moving fast. Right. Like, everything. So I was just like, let me hold off on mm -hmm. it before I, I want to know what's really going to Because before that, stand. it was virtual. They had virtual a thing DJ. with virtual DJ. Yeah. So people started breaking away from virtual DJ. And I mm -hmm. couldn't stand that. People I saw his virtual I was like, you ain't no. DJ. Yeah, virtual DJ, was, virtual DJ pretty much did everything for you. It moved the record. Like you move, in. you can hit the sync <laughs> button and everything. Just sync up. I'm like, oh, get out of here. <laughs> it's not DJ. So, it's yeah. not. It's not. So um, so yeah. Then I started with the uh, CDJs. Yep. The uh, Pioneer CDJ 1000. Best in the world. Started with those, and then I uh, went back to vinyl. Yeah. To it, and then but it was it was more uh, technical then. Mm -hmm. So everything was on the laptop. Yep. You know, everything went digital. Yep, everything. So it just... No more crazy. It went from there. Now it's just, man, every little new piece that comes out now, it's like, we, we gotta get on. So I can now pretty much... I needles. can go back from now all the way back and whatever the pieces of equipment that's there, I can work it. That's, that's crazy. You gotta, like, you gotta tell like, now that you don't even need needles. Right. We don't even need needles <laughs> anymore. Now you got virtual needles. You like, put the, just I, drop the... Bloop. Listen, put, people don't... These vinyl. new DJs have no... I deal what it's like. They have it. Everything is laid out on the yeah. platter. They got no excuse. To no, they like, don't know how to work when it's hot. Could you like imagine? They had to work different when it was hot than when it was cold. Oh, temperature Man. mattered. Your stage where you were set up, whether or not people had proper um um sound buffering. So like when you shake your table and stuff. Like back in the day, house party, people don't know why it was Listen. so funny when they hit the table. Say, Stop hitting my right. table. They don't, they don't know why that was that. real. Yeah, like, I used to have you can to hit have tables now. Uh, like pieces yes. of. I used to. And it's so crazy. It wasn't anything specific for that. You, you had, had to, to make it yourself. Curate it. Like you had to make, like you had to grab a t-shirt. Yep. Put it to turn the turntables. Turn because sometime when that bass, when the oh. bass hits, oh. it, it shakes. So it's like you yep. can hear it in the record. And it's mm -hmm. like, 
Oh God, it was the worst. <laughs> People bumping the table. <laughs> yeah, like that's a real. Thing. It's a real thing. Like, but like that was yeah. antiquated. They're like, "What are you talking about? My yeah. such and such. It's fine." Yeah, I'm like, now you can just bang, jump on the table. Yeah, all day. Act now, up. that's why those. That's why the pioneer CDJs and thousands when they came out was such a big thing because. Oh, yeah. It was hard to manipulate with CDs, but when they bought those out, it was like, oh, I can treat this like a turntable mm-hmm. and I get no skipping. Yeah. They have things right now, technology is set up to where they have things for every DJ. Okay. Like every type. I get, I go some places and some of my celebrity DJ friends are like, man, why are you still using those things? Man, get you a, a um a board. Yep. Get you a control. I'm yep. like, man, listen. I'm stuck on this vinyl. Like, I rock out better this way. I got this. I yep. like the feel. Come on. Like, I got big okay. hands. I, I was about to say, it. especially <laughs> like, as an athlete. Yeah. The tactile, the tactile feel of actually controlling the sound on the record. Yeah. And, and making the move, like, and, and the transitions. And, like, I can have it set up. Now, nowadays, because it's virtual, too, if you got the right system, you can just have two turntables and still control four different decks. Mm. Yeah. I tell people, what do you mean? I, mean, I can still use my turntable. What are you talking about? This works. But like you said, like every DJ is different. So mm-hmm. how do you make money as a DJ? Like, what are your different ways That's to make money? Point. So point. really, right now, I just put myself in different areas of the music market. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not stuck in the hip hop clubs. Thank you. You know, the the here. Like, it's to the point now here. Um, you know, I know when they see this, they're gonna be like, "Puff, what you talking about?" But I don't mind not DJing in the club every, you know, every night. night. Right. Yeah, every and, night. And, you know, in certain in certain places, because it's like the same thing over and over and over. Like, I DJ in Five Points now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I DJ for, you know, the the Caucasian crowd now. Mm-hmm. That's what I was about to say. It's I know like, I've I seen have, you, yes. I have fun doing yep. it. Thank because you. Thank you. Your range is much bigger. Is much, is much bigger. They're like, much more acceptable. And you yeah. know, acceptable no disrespect to nobody or no other venue or club, you know, whatever the case may be. But the type of DJ I am, I'm I'm down the road. Yeah. Like you have range. Right. Yeah. And to not be able to show it sucks. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's that's like, your skill set. That's that, what people don't get a DJ people don't supposed understand. to break records. Understand? It's like DJs are not break supposed records. to play the hot yes. records right now. Say like it. that's no. not DJing. Mm-mm. Play mainstream. DJing. Mm-mm. Right. <laughs> DJing is creating a a a vibe, creating yes. a story. Yes. Like I can blend tracks together, and you'd be like, damn. Hell, like you'd be like, I was not expecting that. I was not that. expecting mm-hmm. that. Just went on a journey, right? Like, it, like last night, like when I go to Five Points and I DJ at Vista Union last night, mm-hmm. and I took a, a hip hop track and blended. I took the instrumental and shout out the stems. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank your you. stems are dope, Jesus. Yo. Thank you stems. for stems. Yeah. So yeah. you can stems is for those of y'all who don't know stems is you can take. You're just you're like a producer. Yeah, I can take the vocals out. I can yep. take the chords out, the bass line. I can just do all of that right in front of me on my board. Yeah. So, I would take the the vocals out of one song, a hip hop song, and drop the acapella of a country song, and they go crazy. Yes. They be like, "Oh my god!" Because and so the beat is already yeah. infectious, and they know the word. Yeah. And it's like, and you can't do that in certain places. Okay. No. And I, I just like to be free. Don't get me wrong. I, I would go any place and, and do what, need, what, what needs to be done. I've been in the trap but, clubs. I've done the trap yeah. clubs. Get y'all gangster and ready to fight. Cool. I could do right. that. I could do that. But I can, yeah. it's nice to have the freedom. Mm-hmm. Listen, I, I have some of the best times when I go down to Five Points or when I do any party of that sort because it's like they listen to everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They like Everything. Like, so, if I play Nelly in one of our hip-hop clubs, yeah. they'd be They're like... Looking. And it's Nelly. Yeah. So what do it's you sad. listen to as a DJ? What music? That's like, what's good. on your playlist like right now? Like, because when I'm in the car, I listen to nothing that I play in the club. Right. Like, that's that's how it's supposed right. to be. Nothing. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to be. Because, like, I have this, this curative mind to where I listen to other things and then an a image comes. It's like, oh, you get that ear. It's like, I could blend this with this. Mm-hmm. I could blend this with that. that. That's just how I am. And mm-hmm. it comes off the fly. Like, I've I've never practiced. I've never set up and say, okay, I'm going to do this in the house. I've never done you that. You got 10,000 hours in, though. I've You're never done that. that. Yeah, you know, 10,000 hours. Yeah, it's natural, you mastery, though. right? Yeah. So now it's natural. 
tell people what a DJ is supposed to be. And people like, they don't understand this. Is a DJ is supposed to be a person that introduces you to new things and that breaks records. Right. Which mm-hmm. means when you don't know that something exists, that DJ heard it before. And back in the day, the big thing about hip hop um, and just DJs in the club, even coming from the disco era, was always crate digging and finding things people didn't know. Yeah. So right. you would have this record, right? And you'd be DJing. You're like, what the heck is that sound? It's kind of dope. And they would come and try to look at your table and see what you're playing. And you put tape over it. They so they might know up. who it is. Because the big thing is you want them to go and try to find it. Right. You got to figure out what this right. is. I bet you aren't even in the right shop to right. find this because you only go to such and such shops. I'm down the street at this at this um shop that sells only um weird jazz and exotic um Indian flute. And that's what you're hearing. That's, and you don't know that. Right. That's a DJ's job, and that's what we're paying you to do. I'm paying you to listen to stuff I don't listen to so you can expose me. Yeah. Right. And if that's, not, then I could just listen to the radio. Listen to the radio. And that's one thing I like to say, like, when I'm talking on the mic, I was like, yeah, we're not playing the radio. You yep. know, we're not playing that, you know. Because I like to dig. Like, it's... Thank you. Sometimes I, <laughs> I get songs, depending on where I am, and I'm like, oh, this would be a dope blend. But I was like, no, nah, I'm in here. I can't do it. Can't do I can't do it. That sucks but being a creative, though. It, it, it does. You it just, does. You, you, like you can, you can only pull it out when it's necessary, necessary. to pull out. Right. All right. They right. say it's last call. Look, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> but do you see the skill that it takes to yeah. be a good DJ? And I explain to people all the time, like, um, one reason, like, I I don't DJ anymore is when, uh, especially after the pandemic. Like, I, I did, like, my last little party and stuff, and then I left. And I was like, man, I don't have the time to deal with the politics. It's politics and everything, though. Yeah. That's why yeah. I don't play basketball no more. Because I don't like the politics. politics. Right. You can't even coach it. Right. The politics. But when someone's able to, to do that job well, like yourself, I, I applaud you. Because I understand the amount of work and, and stress that goes into making sure that you're doing well at your craft. So when I come to a show that you're doing or wherever you're working at and I'm enjoying myself, I'm like, man, I'm so happy this mofo was up there listening to the strange albums and stuff. I'm up here having a good time <laughs> right. in here right now. F everybody else. That's- because I'm like, you went and did your job. Right. And that's what and that's what is appreciated. And so I do want people, especially people who are listening, um, who may want to become a DJ, et cetera. But one thing you have to realize is that you cannot worry about the politics and be good at that craft. No. Almost have to, in, in almost a sense, be an asshole and not care. And I know that's what I used to do as a DJ. I remember I used to be in Charleston. I used to be at some of these clubs. And people be coming, I want to hear such and such. I don't care. All right. And I keep working. They be like, damn. I'm like, but you see how you still dance? You still shaking that monkey, though, right? right? Yeah. I'm like, because that was the point. That's what you came to do. I think that's the worst part about being a DJ. Request. Mm-hmm. Oh. I think that's the worst. Really? Because oh. it's like, yes. Because it's like, give you're, money, you're creating, you money. you're trying to create a vibe. Like, you're going somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like a... It's like traveling. It's like, okay, we not there yet. Yeah. Boom. We not <laughs> there yet. Let me get Wait, to the let spot. Let me get there. And they ask for songs where they know you're going to play. I'm like, oh, my God. Can you please just it's sit coming. down and just vibe out? <laughs> like, this might not be your area of music right here, but just, it's coming. I got yep. this. I Trust got me. This. We need to get y'all a shirt that says, I don't care. I got I this. I got yeah. this. And then you just yes. wear that. Oh, yes. yes. And when they come, you point to it. You like, hear that? Come you on, hear like, that? please, like, just. Do you have people try to give you money? Oh yeah, all the time. Have like, you ever had ladies try to time, flash you? It's time. I'm taking. I'm taking. No, they money. do whatever. They do whatever to try to get your attention. And I'm telling you that I know. This is why I'm asking them these because I'm like, oh, I want to know. I want to hear these answers. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Crazy. yeah. I've, I've taken. I've taken money sometimes and still haven't played the song, and not not because I wanted to, yeah. but it's like. Get out when, my face. when you DJing, your mind is is I'm not going. thinking about you. Like yeah. I'm not thinking about you. Yeah. I'm thinking about everybody. Everybody. Freaks. Like, granted, you cannot make everybody happy. Yeah. You gotta please the majority. But it's like, I may be, okay, I got the song coming. And I get into a vibe and forget all about it. And I'm yeah. like, oh shit. I done. I forgot this, to play the man. doggone song. And you know, sometimes they come back up, you play my song. Sometimes I get the money back. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, sometimes they'll forget and leave, and I'll be like, oh, shit. They had a good got, time. I got That's $40. Just a tip. That's a tip. Tip. Like, yeah, tip. tip. So, I mean, it's it's nothing. No, you know, no pun to anybody who, who's who's ever done that. But yeah. it's just, they got to understand, like, we're like we're artists at mm-hmm. the same time. Yeah, it's like telling somebody how to paint. Like, it's like telling, right. Painting. Right. I don't, do I, I come to your job? Here. Yeah, do I come it. to your job and tell you, <laughs> Thank how, you. To, how to type this letterhead Thank or you. do this, this? Yes. No, I don't. I don't do that. So, you know, and like, 
like my brother, man, shout out to Louis V, man. That's that's my dog. You know, yeah. that's that was one of my one of my guys coming up. You know, he really wanted to de to learn how to DJ. Yeah. So I said, man, come on, I got you, bro. Yeah. Like we he came to the club, you know, he watched, followed, and everything. And so that's normally how I teach. I teach how I learn. Yeah, that's oh, how I learn. Yeah, by, you come and I learn by watching. Mm -hmm. So I just One, two, three, I take four, five. I don't need no instruction mm -hmm. manual because it's no, I don't want to mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. Let me see it. Mm -hmm. And I got it. All I need to do is see it once. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna put my own thing to it. Yeah, I'm gonna create my own vibe. So uh, uh, like Louis that. V said in one of his uh, in one of his uh, interviews, it was like it's not sometimes it's not always a re uh, a request. Sometimes it's like a reminder. Like, and it depends on how the delivery is. You're like, oh, hey man, you got that? So, so you be like. You know what? I do. I, I do. Okay. I got I'll, this. I'll make sure it's I got I, this. I let me let now. me let me get to that. Let me create it. But when you get them requests, hey man, can you play that? Yeah. Uh, can Respect. you play that? Like, come on six now. red. Or, just Respect. like, come on, man. Like, Especially when it don't be the vibe for it. Like, it you come like, in. I'll be, some, I'll be in my R and B vibe. <laughs> yeah. They want to hear God dog. Can I hear somebody get shot up? <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just saying that because I want to say a specific song. Can I hear somebody get shot up? I need to hear the club. Like, let me get bus. there. I got no. some grown people that want to vibe. I yeah, got you see them right here. They're enjoying themselves. I got you in a minute. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's it, it's a task, and we we as DJs, well, most of us, we think we're like three, it. four songs ahead. That's like, what they're playing get. a song they right now. But we're that. like, okay, yeah, I got this song next. This song next. Already. Because some you got to be on the fly sometimes. Yeah. If something ain't working, boop, in and out. Yep. You're gonna get gonna get uh 30 seconds. Right. Cause at 28, that's the level. That 28 is magic. <laughs> they don't know on about the song, 20, 30. You gotta What's that be mean? In it out. It's bars. So yeah. Like, but yeah, you know what your count is. You've played at a bunch of venues. So what is your best venue so far that you can remember? Ooh, man. Favorite like concert. Give us two. You ready? Uh, one here in the state of the South country. Carolina. Yeah, outside. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh well, I will say the biggest, the best concert was that I've done was Rod, I think it was Rod Wave. Mm -hmm. I think it was a Rod Wave concert. Um, man. Uh, Who was it at? It was at Colonial Life Arena. Oh, wow. So that concert was a couple was months ago. Yeah. That was, no, I didn't know. No, this was year. like, this was before COVID, I okay. think. Okay. Oh, so think this is before he had, oh, this is. Was this before COVID? I can't, it, I, I can't remember exactly when, but shout out to my dog, Cadillac, man. Uh, we do we we work real well together. Like we got this like this mental telepathy thing. We like we already know where we going with stuff. So he was like, uh, you know, Puff, hold on, I got, watch this for a minute. So he, you know, had the crowd going. So we stopped the music. He was talking and whatever, whatever. He told everybody to turn their lights on. So I remember, like it was yesterday, I dropped. Um, it was Kodak Black. Um, super superstar. Oh, that, that man! When I dropped that, the place went crazy. And I, when I tell you, I had chills all over my body. Cause when you like, people don't realize being in the club versus being at a concert it's is different. different. Like you really have crowd control at a concert. Yeah. Cause it's not you don't have to keep playing, keep playing. You can stop, do whatever. Yeah. Do whatever you're you want to do. You're, you're right. Really performing. You're performing. Yeah. So man, when that happened, and that place erupted, and we were like. Oh my God! Like that was one of the probably one of the best feelings I've ever had DJing, um, DJing a concert. And then club wise, oh man, I remember back, back in Dreams. I don't know if y'all remember Dreams. I remember dreams. Oh, dreams. Yes, yeah. Dreams. Yeah. Man, it used to be so smoky, like not smoky, but like hot. Like hot. people got Sweating. steam be... coming off them. Yeah. The back of the club, it was like this big, huge, long bench, and it had glass behind it. Oh, when so I tell you, you couldn't even see, the glass was just fogged, fogged up. up. That's how you know you're doing your damn job. And that's job. the thing. Everybody used to say, oh, a Puff got his shirt off. Going in. It's going in. <laughs> it's over. Yep. It's over. So, yeah, I used to remember that, man. My shirt come off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's time to go. It's time to go. So, yeah, that's probably your yeah, club dreams. And off the top of my head, yeah, club dreams and... um. Yeah, the Colonial Life Arena, and I've I've done other venues, you know, out of out of the state. Um, when I used to DJ, I was DJing for Nicki Minaj for for a minute. Yeah, before she How got that, that? Uh, the Young Money deal, uh, it was cool. Like, um, how was back, the work environment? 
it was, and we we really weren't like around each other like That's that until wanted, yeah. it was like really like showtime. showtime. Yeah. Because I was really dealing with uh, her manager back then. Gotcha. Um, and you know, we were talking on the phone, and this was back when she was with Safari. So oh, I also had wow. contact with Safari for a while too. And um, so long ago. yeah, and <laughs> it's, it's crazy like it, it? he actually had me working on the Beam Me Up Scotty mixtapes. Oh, shut up. Yeah. Like, I don't oh. I don't really talk about that too much, but he had, I was really, I literally was working in the studio at Quantum Beats. Oh, wow. On the Beam Me Up Scotty. <laughs> and, you know, things didn't work out how I wanted it to work out. But, you know, it was crazy because, you know, like, I'm doing it. Next thing you know, I had DJ Holiday. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, okay, cool. All right. You know, it Happens, is what it is. Yeah. But you know, that's 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 just the music industry. Yeah. You know, it yeah. is is it's things cut, turn bro. quick. Things turn quick. Yep. Quick. Quick. Yeah. So yeah. excellent, man. Excellent. Did have you have you been out of the country? Yeah, I um went overseas to play basketball. Uh went to Sweden. I lived in Sweden for a while. Oh, how was uh, that? <laughs> oh man, that's they love the late, they love the uh... Listen. Black men over there, right? <laughs> listen. <laughs> I've heard that. I'm telling you, listen. Uh, they and it's like crazy because to you. Like, Sweden, like, the part I was, I was in Copenhagen, and I lived in a, I lived in Copenhagen in a small town called Kalmar. Kalmar. So, um, yeah, the women there, like, they're built. Like, you ever seen, like, those volleyball players? I heard they built different. They're built. They're like tall and slant, like it yeah. looks like they're about to pull some kind of super blonde and hair, yeah. and it's like, oh yeah. my god, you some beautiful women over there. They different, here. and they ain't got too many of them fat chubby ones that no, we see it's, in the I, it's not too many fat people over there. They it's, don't eat like, like that. The air is pure over there. Yeah. The water so different. clean. You go to the restaurant, it's water already on the table, and don't you dare ask for a fresh so glass of water. Nothing. You walk in, you are gonna drink that water that's sitting <laughs> on the table. Drink it. It's good. <laughs> Good. It's worth the water. It's, yeah. it, it's great. That's just how pure everything was. Everything is so clean. Like, it wasn't a lot of the, the preservatives and none of that. Like, it was just clean. We can't even sell eat. our vegetables over there. It's, Think about Dang. it. It's nuts. But, yeah. you know, the, the experience was was like no other. Like, and I love the shop. Yeah. So over there, you had all your designers. You had your Louis, That's where your Gucci, yeah, the house, your Bennett, the house your Pride. Like, the whole house of fashion was yeah. there. Man, I, I had a ball. I had a ball. <laughs> Did you want to come back? I, I had saying. a ball until they tried to make me go to school. And I was like, bro, I just got out of school, bro. Why did they try to make you go back because to school? Because I didn't have my citizenship. Oh, oh so to okay. get your So you either had to have a visa, a yeah. work visa, mm -hmm. or you had to go to school. Mm. So at the time, they were working on my paperwork, you know, while I was playing basketball. To get me all the way in the game. And, you know, back then I was young. Oh, and, you know, yeah, I'm thinking yeah. in my head, oh, I'm going overseas. I'm about to make this money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it worked like that. No. So, like, and, you know, they was like, well, you can go to school and until we get everything. And I'm like, you know what? I'm getting homesick. <laughs> I'm Take, me back. Take me back. I'm ready to go yeah. back home. I done had enough of it. Right. So, after a while, you know, I was like, you know what? It's time to go. Yeah. I can't. I can't Everybody. wait over here. It's, it's not like I'm in my I'm in Mexico or it just you know, pop back home. I mean, yeah, I could just catch it. Good. No, 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 that's no, a whole, no, no. That's, that's a whole sixteen yeah. hour. Yeah, that's expensive. Sixteen hour that's a flight process. in process. Like it's yeah. not just happening. It's like not. That. You can't just say, "Hey, I'm, I'm gonna come home next week." And I, I'm no, mm -mm. no, you there? Yeah, unless you got some kind of special military passport. You there? Like, you yeah, there. and then um, I was living with one of my dad's ex-teammate's son. Oh. So, yeah, that, that was cool. And then I was trying to get acclimated with, you know, speaking the language. Mm -hmm. Swedish is not an easy language to speak. It's mean and it's crazy sounding. It's, it sounds you, like, yeah, it sounds like they're angry. Like you yelling at somebody. they're happy. It's not bad at all. But, I mean, it's not that bad, but I, I, I had to learn how to, you know, communicate. How did sometime. that work? How did that work? Just I just had to be around my teammates, and it's like Let just them... listen. Like I could, if you were talking to me, I could understand what you were saying, but I couldn't say nothing back right, to you. Yeah. So yeah. like, if you were saying something, and I was like, oh, somebody go down. I you know remove myself. And, <laughs> yeah. And then the clubs cold, over there. I know the cold words. <laughs> clubs over there, totally different from clubs over here. Yeah. Like they, they play, go to work. Oh yeah. They, oh yeah. They, they're going to work. They go in. They, they suit go up. in, and everything <laughs> over there is from. House, techno, mm -hmm. pop, 
all genres. Like, and they're playing nothing, your music too. They're right, playing our nothing's music. Nothing's missing over there. Nothing. They playing all genres wow. in one wow. night. Oh wow! Oh, tell them how long that night lasts. In one, oh, they don't. It it, it sun. Don't last. When you it come don't outside, end. the lights are, <laughs> are, are looking like you you outside. Yeah, like the club in Miami. I think it's called. They have some Ibiza. The B, yeah, yeah. It's an, and it's it like, another they one. They do it that, over that there. It's based from yeah, overseas over concept. Uh -huh. So you go to the club, 11, 12 o'clock. You leave out. It's seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, and, like, they, and they, they split still, DJs. Sometime, they right. They got like three Four DJs hours a night. Someone else come and do another set. Another one come, and they're not regular. They're top flight DJs. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. That's what I want to do. And that, that's how those clubs are. I'm not gonna come back. Just be working. Country. And like you were saying. They love black. Mm -hmm. They love dark skin over there. Mm -hmm. Everybody over there, you know, they're, it's they're contrast, pale. right? Yeah, everybody's so pale. If you, if you, you know, African American or whatever, you have, you know, some sense of color. <clears throat> they think you're over there. You either have money. There you go. You business, mm -hmm. or you're some type of athlete. Specifically, oh, if you're, if I, I'm gonna say this specifically, if you're non-African. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. they know a lot of. Over refugees, and stuff. Yeah. but right. if you're um, American black, they're gonna yeah. treat you a little. They'll, they'll take you into the jewelry stores. Oh man, they'll get you get stuff on consignment. They were rubbing on my like I'm in there, yep. and they was girls. I'm standing with my team, and the girls was like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, is this like an exorcism club? Or something? I was like, why are they rubbing on me like this? Like I really, I honestly, I kind of felt violated. Like yeah, a woman. I'm like, right. yeah, I'm like, man. And they're like, I'm gonna and, get some of this chocolate right. man. And my homeboy, he was like, yo, you know, it's chill, cool. He was chill. like, they they <laughs> like this. Yeah. Like this is something new for them. And it was like one of the girls, I think she was, I can't remember what she was, but she was like, oh my God, your skin is so beautiful. And da 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 da. I was like, my black skin. My black skin. I'm black. I'm black. to this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was crazy. And how they how they would invite you, how would they would let you know that they are interested, they will invite you over for tea. Oh, that's a come on. So it was like, I come here, you know, like, yeah, yeah, like, tea and would coffee, you, would like, you like to come, would you like to come over for yeah. like, yeah. and they have like, where do you think that comes from over here? Yeah, like uh, the crumpets <laughs> yeah, and, and tea and all of that stuff. <laughs> and uh, what's the thing it's called? The, um, uh, they look like little sandwich. macaroons. Macaroons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The little cookies. Yeah, right. Macaroons. Like that means I want to smash. Yeah, like, they invite <laughs> really? you over for something. Yeah, homie. Yeah. yeah, you ain't and even I, having no tea. And I was scared because I thought it was like my whole time I'm thinking about. You remember the movie Taken. Hostel? Oh, Hostel. Yes. Oh, and, I forget yo, that was. Big. And oh. I was like, and that's how it looks like that over there in certain parts. That's how it looks. Creep. So it's like. I ain't, if my teammates ain't come, I ain't going. I ain't going you're not about to have me tied up in a bunk. Yo, they like, let me put these handcuffs on you. No, <laughs> give me some more crumpets. Was there yeah. ever a point where you were just scared, like, like uncomfortable? I, I was the first time I had to travel by myself, so I had to go. I had to go to practice, mm -hmm. and I had to catch the bus. No, interpreter. Listen, I didn't know. They, they gave me the a uh, uh, footing of what to do. But I'm still overseas, mm. so I'm like, oh my god! So I caught the bus there, and had to catch the bus back. No, I think I got dropped off. I got dropped off there and had to catch the bus back. Oh my god! So this is when my my spider sense kicked in. I look at landmarks. Uh -huh. I had to learn landmarks. So if I knew, if I saw that building, okay, I know I'm close. So I ended up getting off a stop ahead of where I was supposed to go, and I ended up walking, and I made it. I made it back to to where I was going. I was, listen. <laughs> Grab this listen. heart, my heart. Man, you talking something? Yeah. He's yeah. like, I may not make it back to yeah. Columbia. <laughs> and I didn't go anywhere at night unless I was with my teammates or somebody. You know, I knew like that. That's smart. I'm not gonna lie. This, let the audience hear that because specifically right now, traveling as an American is not as safe as it was back in the day. Yeah. So make sure you with the right people. They different. Don't go like clubs yeah. over something, they're different. Like it's a door. It okay. it'll look like something like a dungeon or something. You won't even think it's a club. Yep. But you open that door and go through a little thing. Oh, Next thing oh, you know, oh, oh, you've been there. Oh, I'm like, yeah. oh, this is what it's like. Blade. Trap doors. It's like you were in Blade. Right. Right. Like, right. It's like <laughs> trap doors. They got yeah. a lot of clubs over there that are yeah. trap doors. Wow. Little back door areas right. where people are in there smoking um yeah. beer pipes with It's like some real life movie stuff. Yeah. What do you think it comes from? That's why I tell people when they see that, I'm like, nah, that's real that's life. That's real. That's real yeah, life. Absolutely. So Man. what do you have coming up next? So, glad you asked. So, 
I got my hands in so many pots right now. So I just started my business probably about a week ago. Um, oh, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, I haven't launched yet, but uh, got my paperwork. So I'm going into uh, fashion and image consulting. So, yeah, basically what I'm doing is I have a lot of people who call me, message me. Hey, Puff, they send me pictures. Hey, what do I need? How, how do I need to put this together? What do I wear with this? And what do I do with this? So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll get you right. So I'm making like, you know, they say if you have a a, a trade, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make, it, make a it a business. Make it a business yep. always. Yeah. Especially like, if you love it. Like you said you love shopping. You love it, exactly. Yeah. Like, so why not? Mm-hmm. So that's that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna, you know, I come to your I'm throwing out some stuff right there before I launch, but um doing wardrobe consulting. So I'll come to your house. Because people like to throw stuff out and I'm like, wait, 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 uh, wait, calm don't down. Do it. We can work with this. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people just got stuff sitting. You're right, and, and they don't know. Don't you know what to do, do with it? it. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I'll come to your house, go through your. We, I will throw stuff out if it needs to go out, but yeah, we do the whole nine. I personal shop, so I'll travel. Oh, that's good. I'll go pick up whatever you need. You styling, know, styling, profiling, whatever. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this Stanley. I'm light stuff today, man. I like how people say this is light work today. <laughs> light work. I wanted to ask this a is light question because you know we always like stick to our questions, but I want to start asking random questions. What made you put this outfit on today? Like Honestly, when you woke up this morning, what made you say, "All right, this hoodie, this pants"? What What was your thought process? It's It's crazy. My thought process is 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 wild. Like I just get these get these visions and of just how I want to look that day. And I get inspiration sometimes through through Google mm-hmm. or through Instagram. Like, I see people wearing certain pieces, and I'm like, hmm, how can I redo that and put my own twist mm-hmm. to it? Oh, yeah. So it's just like, I don't know, I just, I'm just a, have a thing for fashion, so it just comes to me. Like, it's really no, I can't even give you an explanation. It's like, and I like colors. Okay. So I mean, yeah, most you know, people don't get to wear no pale yellow. Right. I guess my my wife bought me some sweatpants like that, and I was looking at it. I was like, <laughs> I was about, I was about to I'm about to wear them today, right? And I was like, I'm gonna put this on my suit. I was super sonic. I was put my super sonic stuff on, right? I was like, I can't get away with that. That won't look good on me. So I said, let me just put on this today. Right. That's his yeah, thought process. Thought. I said, I'm gonna put this on today because I was like, it's supposed to be cold. I'll be comfortable. I wear my green watch. I love my little my wedding watch. This is my wedding band. Set. So I'm like, I'm gonna wear this, right? And I always gotta wear this from dad gave. So I'm gonna put this on. I look normal. I'm yeah. Women, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like, wait, you put the pale yellow on. I, I mean, listen, it look good. It look I just good. I take like I don't I don't like the matchy matchy. Yeah. Like I hate I hate looking like a mannequin. Yeah. Ah. I hate that. I hate that. And people don't understand, you know, fashion, you know, is is real trendy. Yeah. Like a lot yeah. of things from back in the day, that's what we're doing. Like people think these new fads, this stuff people doing now is new. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's just been recycled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Recycled and people put their own thing to it. So I just like to, you know, mismatch things, you know, and, and like put the my kicks own. you got on. Yeah, man. These I I did I couldn't stand these shoes at first. I was about to ask you. Like, I couldn't wear the hard to damn them. that looks like that is such but a hard I saw work. a vision. I'm like, I tried them on. I'm like, you know what? I can work with these. I can work with these. I was told my brother about colorways and like people won't wear certain things or or like prices for shoes will drop because of colorways. Yeah. I'm like, you can make that work. I'm going to buy that. And I've I've, I've come to, my fashion sense has really opened up. Mm -hmm. Like opened up a whole lot. Like the stuff that I wear now, I said I would never have worn maybe two years ago. Mm -hmm. Ah. Never. I just bought a pair of boots uh, by Balenciaga. That the average eye will probably look at those boots and say, "What? Where are those?" But and I said that <laughs> myself. I said, "What? Are they stranger than Prada boots?" Listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> this this is a weird boot, but when you put it on and you accessorize it, you put yeah. the right things on, it looks amazing. It looks so it's one yeah. of those things. It's a piece. You put it that piece amazing. on, you can build around. Right, and I buy pieces. Statement, See, statement, statement, pieces. statement pieces. pieces. You, you gotta yeah. have that, statement. And that's yes. why when I step out, is it looks like. Oh, Puff really got dressed. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't. It's yeah. just I have pieces. Mm-hmm. I buy pieces. So when I come out, you would think, oh, I tried to put this. No. It go I with just grab things. this, boom, yeah. grab it, boom. And it looks like I really got dressed for something, but it's not. It's like you got on standard black, got your pale yellow, got your shoe. Like, 
but your standard. It's, it's, and it it's don't look simple. like it is. Right. But somebody else would just have on a pair of sweatpants and yes. something else. But yes. I mean, to each his own. You do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Like my, my ex used to say, you don't have no regular clothes. I'm like, what a regular clothes? <laughs> <laughs> you got some regular clothes. Like, what a regular clothes? Oh, my Lord. I'm using it. You got some regular clothes. I'm going to tell my wife that. I'll put that on the shirt. some regular clothes. Put that on the shirt. Yeah. What are what regular, regular clothes? clothes? Regular clothes. It's some regular clothes. Yo, that you one and then, and then the other one. Person. Yo, you got to get right. the other one, too. I'm telling you, I am the brand stuff. No, that's yes. what she does. I love she, it. She, no, she just did that. She's good on that. She good on that. Yeah. Okay, for the women, we didn't get Go to talk ahead. about Queen's Court, but what type Speak. of female are you looking to attract in your life? Okay, I could run through that real quick, real quick. <laughs> so, yo, Be ready for that. Yo, so, no, I, I just got out of a relationship, and it was like, you know, I'm like, what the hell? You know, try some. What, what, you know, what, what am I losing now? Mm-hmm. That's I'm true. Lost, yeah. I lost the girl. Yeah, you know, that's lost. a good point. So sh- why not? So yeah. So uh, Will Packer was producing a show, and I've done a show previously called uh, Blind Date. That's the show I was famous for, and it was now. Yeah, we're not gonna get it. Out I remember that, that now? <laughs> I'm gonna go back and watch yeah. it. Yeah. But, oh. So yeah. So um, I was casted out of I don't know how many thousands of entries. So they picked 21 guys. Okay. And I was in the first group of eight who they put on the show. So they did it. And we didn't know. We didn't know ourselves. We thought we were the only ones there. So they brought us in. We met the girls. Um, it was Evelyn Lozada, Nivea, and Tamar. Mm. So it was a series of dates <clears throat> to where the first round were dates or things that they liked to do. Mm-hmm. And then once we moved in the house, it turned into, okay, it's a guy's time. So now we, when they broke it down to 11 guys, they moved us into a house. Uh, and we all lived in the same quarter. Really? Could you imagine 11 guys? Just say oh. like a room like this. Like Just say That's this like whole space. Take the, knock the walls down. Right. Just <laughs> take this whole space, put 11 beds in it, put a kitchenette, put a bathroom, and yeah, we had to share two bathrooms. 11 dudes had to share two bathrooms. It wasn't, it wasn't like a uh type situation. But, but it was grown-ass yeah, men. Yeah, well, grown-ass men. So you would think, okay, somebody going to fight, somebody yeah. going to slam. Nah, we all, we all loved each other. We had a thing for each other. But uh, we 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 actually kind of helped each other out. Oh, you know, with the dates. Yeah, because you know, some people were there for the actual love part. Some people were there for well, their yeah. own. There mm-hmm. you go. But you know, um, so I, you know, fast forward. I made it down to the last. It's supposed to be last six. Mm-hmm. Each woman, each woman had two guys to choose from. One of the guys got sent home early, and um. It was five. So, you know, I shout out to my guy Levon. Uh, that was the guy that Evelyn chose. Mm-hmm. That they got they got engaged and with everything. And, you know, they went on to do their thing. And I, they broke up not too long ago. So everybody's calling me like, yo, Pop, you got to shoot your shot. Like, da, 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 da. And I'm like, man, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Ev, she's, she's, she's cool. Like, people. Yeah, she's cool people. You know, we, she, she always. She was good at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And she always a whole of, you know, whole a piece of me because she told me some real stuff. She was like, you know, granted you're not my king, but you're gonna make some woman one day a very happy woman. And when she said that, I was like, that's crazy. Yeah. Cause it's like she really only she's only known me for X amount 10, of time. Yeah, X yeah. amount of time, 10 weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like just that's our interaction and conversation. It's it said a lot. It it spoke volume to her, and it was yeah. like I was just being real. Like it wasn't no facade. If, I was about if, to say, it if for ones like who you. saw the show, they saw, and I felt that I was too reserved. I could have gone harder, but you know, it's just me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's you being yourself. I, I, I played a room. I watched the room. Yeah, I watch how everybody moves. It's chess, not checkers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I watch how everybody moves and make my strategic moves after that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it 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 it. I felt good to yeah. to date somebody of that caliber. You know, financial wise, you know yeah. where she is in life, yeah. all kind of things. It's like it show who I was as a person. And you can it's hold like, your own. Why am I chasing? But I could be attracted. You ready? Eh. Why, Those why am I chasing somebody <laughs> who ain't even doing what they Ratchets. want from yeah. somebody else mm-hmm. for themselves? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They require mm-hmm. us to have all of this, do mm-hmm. this, do that. But what do you have? This? Do you have this? Thank you. No. Thank you for saying. I like so that you said chasing, that. No, I'm not chasing you. Yeah. You don't need to go get no sexy red. <laughs> I heard this guy, I'm going to say that, that you said that, right? There was this guy, I listened to this um, 
I subscribe to this thing on YouTube. It's like gangsters talking, right? I like listening to the gangsters yeah. talk, right? And this guy got tattoos all over his face and stuff like that. And it was crazy. They're like, yo, would you date Sexy Red? He's a rapper. He said, no, why would I do that? I, there's a Sexy Red right there. There's a Sexy Red right there. There's a Sexy Red right there. Right. Sexy Red just got a bag. He said, I want to date that. And I was like, good point. Even the guy yeah. with the tattoos on his face knows that. Right. right. So I tell people, you have to know, you have to give yourself value. And like you said, like, you have to make sure that the person that you're going to want to be with, and this is a lot, for a lot of millennials, it's hard for them to understand this. You got to make sure you know what you're getting yourself into, and you have to make sure that you are valuing yourself properly exactly. before you decide to jump. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Have to. A, lot, a lot of these women I see these days, they want a, they want a, a ready, ready-made person. Say and I'm not saying, you know, you, people have standards. You know, there's nothing wrong with wanting that. But then again, you have to realize what comes with mm -hmm. what you want. Yes. It's stipulation to everything. Always. You want a made man, but does that made man want? Yeah, you cute, you pretty, you fine. Yeah, I want. I got a nice piece of arm candy. But at the end of the day, if you don't have, if you're not on the same level or close to, to the level yeah. that he's on, yeah. he can go, he can Easily. say, you know what? I don't need Easily. you no more. You holding me you, back. You a fun you while I have. Easy. Right. Matter of fact, there's a, there's a number attached to it. Right. So for every man who makes over 80 grand a year, the less likely that they'll be uh, faithful to you if you're not on the level. Right. And then, so if they're making 80 and you aren't making 60 to 80, they'll walk out. You they hear can. that ladies yeah. level up later. I mean, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> and it's not a personal and, thing. It's right, just option. It's not. It's, it's, it's an option. I mean, date, date with expectations of helping each other out. There you right. go. It's right. always, Building. I'm not, I'm not Captain Save You. Captain Save a Hoe. I know. She right in. Right. I, I was trying. I didn't want to say that. I know. You good, no, man. I be calling niggas that. She calling it like it is. Yeah, she's literally like, like this. Oh, yeah, she's like I'm not, that. I'm not your... Uh, let, <laughs> let me be your savior on a love, a mental yes. stimulation spiritual. level. Spiritual. Right. Spiritual. Right. spiritual. I don't... Not we can, I can have money. But yeah. guess what? That money could be gone tomorrow. Yeah. Something, then something what? could happen. Bad. Then what? What we got? We're both out. We're both ass out. Right. Like, Let's no, help each other no. build. Uh, exactly. Let's build an imp. And that, that's that's always been my thing in, you know, my last couple. My, I used to always say to myself, I'm trying to build an empire. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, people want this Jay-Z, Beyonce, this whoever, these power couples out here. No. Mm -mm. No. Mm -hmm. Like, Beyonce no. wasn't on Jay-Z level. No. It went. It he started. saw something else in her. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then she jumped him. And then she, yeah. <laughs> they built this. They built it together. Yeah. So, you know. That's yeah. it. You know, Where can they, uh, they find you on social media? Yeah. So really, I don't really, I don't do Facebook. I have a Facebook, but I don't really use Facebook. I don't use TikTok. I don't use Snapchat. I really just use Sound, Instagram. There you go. So yeah, so my Instagram is the real T H E R E A L D J Puff F C. That's my Instagram. Well, that's real. long. My puff, my page got hacked. My DJ oh, Puff S C page. Was I was about hacked. to ask. That yeah. makes sense now. Yeah. Okay. Let me so, go file the new one. That page was hacked. No so way I, from I that. couldn't. And I didn't, and this was during COVID. I got hacked during COVID. So it I was, was down waiting. bad. I was waiting. So that So was, then no one could get in contact with you to that, dang, listen, that, sucks. that was that was fuel on my fire. So do you like post any of your like playlists or anything? Like yeah. I, I used to. I used to do uh SoundCloud and all that stuff, but it's like I, I need to. My manager told me it was like well, you need to start posting more yeah. content. And I, you're a brand now. And it's crazy. I Especially had a like, crazy like, set with last the night. Yeah. I was like, damn, Serato, like this is a Serato playlist. Bro, you know Listen, you can do that. You're right. You're right. And and that's that's one thing that I'm I'm, I'm gonna stuff. hold accountable to myself. Yeah. And that's why I like accountability people around. Yeah, me. Like, we, we got you. And you we know what we'll you? do too, because hey, hey, hey. <laughs> like we run the playlist for our stuff, man. Yeah. You put your playlist up. We'll pull yeah, stuff we'll put your playlist, playlist up. Yeah. Like, share it. Okay. So yeah. that's yeah. what we do. And people listen to our playlist. Send us your stuff. And it's part. It's my fault because I'm trying to. You know, I'm trying to dab into other things, and it's just like it's okay. time consuming. Yeah. Understood. Like, Understood. You know, you know, I I, I don't want to be working for nobody. I don't no. want to make somebody else rich when I can make myself rich. Well, exactly. Why not? Exactly. So, man, say we're about to wrap up. But I gotta say, man, I enjoyed this talk. Yeah, it was really me too. Good like Appreciate I see you in the street. Yeah. I never had, get the chance to like think, sit yeah. down right. and yeah. like talk. And we always talk yeah. about this is one of the things like because I hate to catch people when they're working or doing things. You mm -hmm. can't really have a good conversation. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. Um, and I'm going to remind you, man, baseball. Baseball, baseball, baseball. <laughs> but before um, we wrap up, just want to say um, thank you, everybody, for listening to the Hilltop Glove podcast. This is DJ and what? Tamaya. And in the background, we got Skip, our esteemed guest. 
DJ Puff, baby. There we go. Appreciate you guys. We want to thank everybody for listening. Uh, make sure you tell somebody next to them that you love them, that you appreciate them. Until next time that we see you, peace. Bye.